How do you rotate an object in three dimensions? So you take an object like that and you and rotate it. That would be something that's useful, you can imagine, in computer graphics. But how are you going to do this? Now, one of the neatest ways of doing this mathematically uses a new type of number beyond the regular numbers you know. So there's beyond the real numbers, as we call them, they're even beyond the complex numbers. If you've heard of complex numbers before, it's even beyond that. They're called quaternions. They're fantastic. So imagine I want to move along in one dimension. So you're living somewhere here. And if I said move plus five, plus five means you move five units to the right along this line. So I'd end up over here. If I said instead move minus three, you might understand that means move three units, but that time move three units to the left. So that's how you move in one dimension. That's fairly easy, isn't it? All right, let's talk about moving around in two dimensions. And let's say I want to end up at a point over here. What that might be, three units this way, let's call that a three. And then I move four units up like that. One way you could write that as a set of instructions is to write it as 3 plus 4i. Some of you may know what's coming here, some of you may have seen this i before, but for now let's just say i means turn 90 degrees and go up and down. Right. For now that's what it means. All right. So that's one way I could travel to that point. Or alternatively, I could look at it this way, I could try to travel 3 across and 4 up, or I could rotate myself to this angle here, and move along this diagonal line here. And that would be 3 plus 4i as well. Right? You could use the same instructions to make that point. That's how you travel in two dimensions. I mean, if I want to then go further and travel maybe a bit more further on, so this, let's say I wanted to go maybe one more across and then two up like that, what I could do then, if I adding a further 1 plus 2i, I end up at this point, and I can say that this point is the combined result which means I've actually travelled, what, three across and then a further one, four across and six up. Or, if you like, it's the combined result of going from here up to here. So we can add these numbers together, and we should think of them as numbers, right? You can add them together and you can move around in two dimensions. So this time, let's rotate this line. Let's take my combined result here. What have I got? This is four plus six i. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. If I rotate it 90 degrees, uh, I think it's going to end up something like that. And it will end up here. It will end up on a point here. So this is going to be a 90 degree rotation. This point is actually at minus 6 plus 4i. And that's where I end up if I rotate. These look similar to each other. Uh, why do they look similar? How can I get from this number to this number? What I've done, actually, is I've multiplied. Instead of adding the numbers together, I've actually multiplied this time by the number, we call it a number, the number i. Uh, so there is a special rule with this. The special rule is i times itself, i times i, is equal to minus 1. Just to show you what I did, I took where I was, 4 plus 6i, I multiplied it by i, and what did I get? I got 4i plus 6, well, let's call it i squared. Oh, what is that? That is 4i minus 6, yeah. Or in other words, where I ended up here, minus 6 plus 4i. So multiplying by that number i means you rotate 90 degrees. If you do it twice, you get minus 1, which does make sense. So if you rotate 90 degrees and then rotate 90 degrees again, you're 180 degrees now, you're facing the opposite direction, so you're going negative direction, so it does make sense. And it turns out that if you multiply these numbers together, you get rotations. When you multiply the two numbers together, you add their angles together. So if I want to rotate 45 degrees, I would get my triangle for 45 degrees. 1 over root 2 there, 1 over root 2 here. Oh, so that's nice, nice, and that's a 1 now. Uh, that is a 45 degree angle. Written as a number, that is 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2, lots of i. There you go, so I've gone that distance across and then that distance up. If I multiply by that number, I would rotate by 45 degrees. 
So adding them together makes you travel around in two dimensions. Multiplying them together makes you rotate in two dimensions. Now, if you're ahead of me and if you've seen this sort of thing before, you may recognize these as complex numbers, which by the way, is a terrible name, complex numbers, which makes them sound like difficult numbers, which I don't think is the intention. I think the idea is they are compound numbers. They are actually two dimensional numbers. That's a way of thinking of complex numbers. Real numbers are one dimensional numbers, Complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers, and you can use them to travel in 2D and rotate in 2D. So the question is, how do we rotate in 3D? We must need three-dimensional numbers, right? So we must have to introduce an I and a J as well. So we have three-dimensional numbers, and that's what people thought. It turns out we don't need three-dimensional numbers. We need four dimensional numbers. To rotate in three dimensions, bizarrely, you need a four dimensional number. Let me show you how this works. So that's so, blah, blah, blah. Right. So there was an, an Irish mathematician called William Hamilton, and he was thinking about this problem, and he couldn't solve it. He said, well, it doesn't work in three dimensions. I can't get it to work. And the story goes that he was having a walk with his wife along the canal in Dublin, and then suddenly, inspiration struck, and he suddenly realised, I don't need three dimensions, I need four dimensional numbers. I need I, J, and K. So flushed with this, he immediately walked over to a nearby bridge over the canal, and he carved in the rules that he needed to make this work. These are the rules that he carved into that bridge, I squared, is equal to the j squared, which is equal to the k squared, which is equal to i times j times k, which is equal to minus 1. It's very similar to the complex number idea. The complex numbers, i squared equals minus 1. That's what we needed for that. It's very similar, but no, we need i, j and k. He carved this into the canal bridge, which unfortunately, graffiti, what a, what a vandal. Uh, unfortunately, it's not there anymore, but now there is a plaque celebrating the rules, or his discovery of quaternions. The rules are there, and uh, every year, mathematicians around Dublin have a pilgrimage to the spot where he had this idea for quaternions for the first time. So by multiplying these four-dimensional numbers, you can now rotate, like, like the 2D version, you can rotate things in three dimensions, and this is how things are done using computer graphics. But not only that, it's how things are worked out uh, for the rotation or the orientation of a space shuttle going up, or it's how they work out the orientation or the rotation of your smartphone. So let's say I want to rotate an object in three dimensions. What I do is I pick a line, like this pen here, I stab the object with this pen, and then I can rotate around this pen here. So I might stab it this way, and then I can rotate the object like that. Or I might stab this way, so it rotates the object this way, or I'll this way, and so we can rotate like that. So how do we write this? So I take a line like that, and then I want to rotate around that line. Let's do an angle of theta like that. Let's call it V. This line we're calling V. So it's a three-dimensional thing. It has three coordinates. So let's call it V1 and V2 and V3. We're going to, let's take a point that's getting rotated around. Uh, so let's call that a P, and that's sort of X, Y, and Z for that point in three dimensions. This is how things work. But now we're going to rotate it using a quaternion. What does a quaternion look like? It looks like this. A quaternion, let's call it H would be something like A plus BI plus CJ plus DK. And actually for this, I do need another little thing, something, something called H star. And H star is A minus BI minus CJ minus DK. Right. If I want to rotate by an angle of theta, A, B, and C are defined as A is going to be equal to cos of theta over 2. B is going to be written as 
v1, that's come from my vector here, that my stabbing pen, sine of theta over 2. The c is v2, lots of sine theta over 2. And the d needs the v3, lots of sine theta over 2. So it turns out we need four components for our number that we're going to use. We need four components to have the freedom to do the stabbing and then the rotating around that vector. Uh, and how do you work out the rotation? And then finally, if P, which is the point I'm rotating, you write P as a quaternion. Its coordinates are x, y, and z. It's actually x, lots of i, plus y, lots of j, plus uh, z, lots of k. And finally, the rotation is h, p, h star. Right, that's the maths of it, right? That's the main maths. But we need four components to our number to have the freedom to be able to rotate around a vector and then move the angle around it. So the complex numbers contain the real numbers as well. And it turns out the quaternions contain the complex numbers and in turn, they contain the real numbers. And when you don't need the j and the k, now you've got a complex number. And if you don't need the i, you've got a real number. So you might be thinking, what's next? Is there a next step up? And there is. The next step up is octonians. Eight dimensional numbers. Octonians, which have their own set of rules as well, very similar. But a very similar idea. But every time we go a step further, they get a bit more abstract, they lose a bit of structure, and there's a property that you lose each time you do it. So the more you do this, the less useful they become. Octo Octonians have some uses in very abstract maths, but they're not as useful as quaternions are. And there is then a step above that, uh, the 16-dimensional numbers, the sedenians. But again, you lose another property when you go further. And each time you do, they get perhaps less useful. So what are these properties that you're losing each time you go further up? And unfortunately, what you lose is when you go from the complex numbers to the quaternions, the property you lose is this. 